This is your beginner guide to Gran Turismo 7. In this video, you are going to learn absolutely everything about GT7. Every little secret, every little thing you can do, everything that's been added since launch. I spent thousands of hours in GT7 and GT Sport. I've been playing Gran Turismo basically all of my life. So I'm going to let you know. I want to show you some secrets about buying cars. So where you buy cars from the main is in Brand Central. It's a place where every car... Uh, every manufacturer has like a shop, including the, the legendary Bulvagari uh, marquee that when we were kids, we all wanted the Bulvagari VGT, as you can see here. Now, if you're in um, VR, you'll have an extra menu that pops up that will allow you to see the cars in a VR showroom, which is very, very, very cool, except you're limited to sort of like an underground car park underneath the brand central. They should really create actual sort of showrooms that are branded for the... Um, uh, different uh, brands but they don't seem to want to spend any time any more time developing vr so fair enough but you see you've got all the cars but you don't have a lot of old cars you may have noticed even if we go somewhere like jaguar you won't have a lot of the old cars it's all the new cars why is that because they've decided to put all the old cars in the used car dealership where there is a secret feature that you won't see if you just start in the game so here is a used car dealership this is a sort of dynamic um, pricing um, structure it goes stuff goes out of stock basically um, and I think it is sort of at some level linked together globally so cars can and they do sell out I don't know what the special pick means here but I already own that car we did it in a in a cheap car challenge video with my co-presenter who chose it I had a terrible time in that car <laughs> it was a lot of fun to do so you can buy your used cars here which you need to do if you actually want to complete some of the cafe menu books for example or just try out what's it like to drive a Ferrari F430. I kind of want to find out. I don't have the money to do so, but I'll save up and do it. But if you don't have the monies like I don't, you can go here if you've completed the game. So I've completed the game. That's why I have it. When you complete the game, you have the car valuation service and you can see here the cars that you can sell. Now, don't be sort of like um, too impacted by the variation green figures. These are all at a massive discount. You're going to make a massive loss by selling these cars for example a gt3 selling it for 182 is a big haircut on that so it's sort of if you have duplicates cars you don't care about cars you actively don't like like if i have an audi tt here you can frankly just get in the bin because i don't like audi tts i drive a peugeot rc so that's just better in every single way so you can sell the cars like that but you're not going to make a lot of money basically but it's a nice feature to sell it's one that I asked about for a long time in videos and finally they've added it, which is great. And we'll start here with a Legend Car dealership. This is where a very controversial area because these cars are very, 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 very expensive. To give you an example, the McLaren F1 or this Alfa Romeo car that looks absolutely horrendous to drive in a racing game where you can only drive on racing tracks would cost me, well, how much would it cost me? Let's find out. 20 million credits, it's going to cost me 160 pounds, British pounds, so about $180 maybe, to buy that car. These cars are expensive, like I can play iRacing for two years and do everything I want to do for the price of that car. Like, games are weird these days, and also they always update the price of the cars as well, like it's a big update feature. Oh, we've updated the prices, we made them more expensive. Weird. Anyway, but it is a uh, feature that if you want to save up for it, you can sort of save up and it's a big thing having that car it's not really a status symbol because anyone can rent these cars online but when the game launched you couldn't rent cars online it was crazy like i actually i kind of miss it um i can't remember what my thoughts were at the time about it i think i said that this is not fair on people who are like me playing part-time and we don't have the time to grind and you know we can't afford to buy all these cars but in hindsight it has also taken away this this you know for those people who do grind and save that they can go in the race in this car so very interesting one that i don't think gran turismo had really thought through but it's a very comp complicated almost economic and social thing there and do you make those cars exclusive so i'll show you what i mean when i say you can rent them so this is a new feature in the game i say new it's been out for like a year now but for me an old school guy it's new so if i go into this race here at monza in group three um previously i could only choose these cars that I own, which is obviously quite a lot of cars because I own Group 3 cars. Let's just actually see, is there a, a specified car? Or group, okay, it doesn't matter. So Group 4 at Laguna Seca, I could only choose these Group 4 cars. That's not every Group 4 car. There's some cars here that I don't have. I'm not sure I have, for example, the 
I do have the McLaren now, but there's definitely a lot of cars here in Group 4 I don't own. But now what you can do is you can rent a car, so you can rent um, every possible Group 4 car. All you can do is you can just not apply livery on it. So that special thing is gone. Like, let's imagine that the this Alfa Romeo is really expensive, and I actually think it is expensive. It's a real prestige. It would be a real prestige thing to race in it because you know that person bought it. But now I can just race in it, even though I don't believe I own it. Yes, I don't own it because I can't afford it. So that has changed. But this is a general um, online structure anyway. So just uh, just to let you know what's going on here. We've got daily races, time trials. Manufacturers Cup, and up here you see my rating. I'm an A-plus driver just because I was doing some silly racing. <laughs> I need to get my ranking all the way back, like fully into the top of A-plus or mid into A-plus or whatever. But that's your ranking there. So I've got the highest safety rating. I've got the highest driver ranking. And that means I'm going to be racing in the highest lobbies, probably in top split. In fact, certainly I'd be racing in top split if I entered now. And you can see my stats there. I've entered almost 500 races and won almost 50 of them. So that's pretty cool. So you can enter these races, and you can see here that um, the one on uh, above race A says no updates. That won't affect your license ranking, so you'll go in and still be ordered by license. But if you crash into everyone, it won't damage your license. So people tend to crash into everyone, unsurprisingly. These two it will affect your license. So if you finish this race first, then your license is likely to go up, but it's not guaranteed. The way the license structure works in Gran Turismo, I'll show you here is is it is it here yes is that actually um it's about the drivers you're racing against so if you go into a really competitive lobby and you do well you should increase your, increase your driver rating if you go into a lobby that's of really slow drivers and you do okay do quite well you might actually not increase your ranking because it wasn't really a competitive lobby for you so that's how it works there daily race c is often the longer race you can see that it's a 10 lap race at monza Daily race B is often a shorter race. You can see it's five laps in group four and there's BOP applied to all of them. It looks like Gran Turismo are doing a BOP test at the moment, although they're probably going to go back to doing a lot of open tuning. The Monza race is a, is a favorite race for me, but I've just been so busy this week. I haven't been able to actually race in it at all. But the good news is Monza is going to be in race B next week. How do we know that? If you join our Discord, discord.gg forward slash Kirith, you'll see the race is being shared in advance as soon as they sort of get announced on the back end we've got an online time trial here this is a great opportunity to drive some of these cars that you might not buy or be able to buy so i can enter this and drive the dino and if you basically finish within three percent of the top time you will actually get two million credits it's, it's the biggest money earner per time you can normally do in the game if you're quite good and this is the world uh, manufacturer series so you can enter this and you can race. This is the, the same series that basically feeds up to the top where you see the people racing at the events. So for example, when I went to Amsterdam, that's a real world live event where it's all Gran Turismo all come down and set it on, especially for, for a LAN event, basically. But you can also race in the exact same events. And if you happen to do really well, you will end up at those top events. Like it is meritocratic like that. Although there is a lot of, over the years, I've appreciated a lot of dark arts and, you know, teams run it you know working out to not enter drivers or enter drivers to affect to affect the points and all sorts of shenanigans but that, that happens at any sort of level like this we're going to start off here with the garage and there's a lot of stuff in the garage that isn't immediately obvious but is quite interesting to go through and look at so your car plays a nice engine noise when you go into the garage it's quite cool also cycles through these views inside so you get actually more detailed views here than you get in pretty much any other place even in some of the exclusive vr modes i'm going to show you how they work as well so firstly you can change your car here it's not a great system in gran turismo 7 i recommend that if you want to um go to like a particular category you go on left hand side here and now you can go into group three group four etc or just everything else they need to do a better job of actually sorting by the categories but you can change the views, you can choose the categories. You can see your cars here that you own. There's a key at the bottom in terms of gift cars, DLC cars, sponsored cars. So do we have any DLC cars here? We should have the Mazda uh, Group 3 that I can show you was a, um, a DLC car, which was the DLC when I bought the game, got that 20th anniversary. Yeah, here, 25th anniversary. There you go there at the bottom with that Supra. So you can see all of that. These are all cars that I own in the game. I've either bought them or they've been rewarded or whatnot, and I can put my liveries on them. If you want to tune them, you come in here to car settings. 
Now, I've spoken with Kazuya Miyuchi, the creator of Gran Turismo, in real life, and he's a very interesting character. He is basically a sim racing god. Now, he has said that he doesn't want to allow people to copy and paste tunes because it would be too easy. He wants people to scribble them down on paper. That's his view. I don't actually agree with that. I think it should be easier to share tunes and recognize tunes. So actually, I created on uh, my website. So you go to sim.doctor or you go to simracenews.com. You will see free sim racing guides and uh, tuning guides specific Gran Turismo I've put together that will tell you what all of these things do. So you can go there to work out what sort of changes to make as tuning has come back into Gran Turismo 7. The skates movies are quite cool. So if you want to see your car in motion, you can do this and then you can record it and put it on Twitter or Facebook, wherever you want to put it. But yeah, you have moving scapes, which you can't actually get in the scapes uh, a menu thing on its own. You can only get them here. It's a little bit of a secret. You get your gifts, which expire. What day is it to say? So that one's going to expire in two days. That one's expiring a little bit. So if you don't use them, they do expire. Loads of mine expire because I keep forgetting to redeem them. And here you have your tuning parts. That is a part of the game that's been massively expanded since launch. And now, to be honest, one of the big... Uh, features of every update is normally um, additional engine swaps and you can see here I've got some engine swaps occasionally there are glitches so on this channel we've done videos when there's a big glitch and you can get unlimited engine swaps and let you know about that now this is a massive one this is the car collection in the game this isn't by the way a critical video of Gran Turismo really I'm just showing you every single aspect of the game this is a beginner guide you can see everything any tips help you get faster or have more fun I do think here though they should do a much better job of uh, showcasing this, making me want to collect cars, giving me little bonuses if I'm if I'm able to complete rows or like groups like bingo or something. But it is quite cool to come here and see these images of the cars that you've collected, what you've driven, and work out the silhouettes of what I have in. That's the RCZ uh, Group B rally car there, for example. That I quite like to drive because that's the car that I drive in real life. So I actually drive this car in real life. Very cool, the GT line. Well, I think it's quite cool. So we'll come out of there and we'll go into the uh, tuning section. So here is the tuning shop and here is where you buy the parts for your cars to enable them to actually even race in certain races. Now when the game launched, you had to come here to get your tyres. You could, so if you, if you enter the race and had the right tyres, you just couldn't actually start the race, but you would have gone through all the menus. They've now changed that. There's a little mini shop in the race menus. But here basically you've got all of your parts and now you have the ultimate parts as well which were certain cars I think you can buy. Um, these were hidden behind roulette tickets before, which was very controversial because it was almost impossible to get. But that's tuning if you want to run in those, those lobbies. It's very rare in uh, the sort of regulated online races that you're able to use sort of those mad parts. GT Auto is another car modification center. So you get your car maintenance. Obviously, I'm going to show you here what it's like when you get your car wash, for example. You get this nice animation and your controller vibrates. And uh, same when they put like a wide body, they stretch the car. So do check your oil, your engine and your body rigidity because it can go down into the orange levels and that can actually affect you in online races depending on whether BOP is on or off. So balance the performance on or off. Car customization, this is a whole nother area that Gran Turismo arguably has the best car customization of any game it's, it's literally incredible. I mean look at this livery here that someone created for the Supra and what you can do is this is a top secret if you want to get the best liveries basically go to content search type in the words KCR which is Kirith Community Racing and you just get incredible liveries that just everyone's going to be jealous of you on track so you can change them I absolutely love this uh, blue and yellow sort of like this feels like a nautical livery there and you can see sometimes you might have to pay some credits to get some paints but it's very 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 limited you can also go in the livery editor and create your own liveries or modify liveries you can do here for the custom parts and whatnot the wheels the paint color so so much customization available in gran turismo 7 it's a great part of the game you can very legitimately get your money's worth on gran turismo 7 by just actually doing livery modifications i'm not joking at all it's a great part of the game so, going to exit out of that. Let's just have a look at skates before we get into the races here. So this is the, oh sorry, this is the showcase. This is an area where you can just browse and see incredible photos, liveries, um, people doing very, very, very creative things. It's, it's incredible. And again, you can search here. If you do content search, this is styles, but you can search replays and whatnot. Search KCR and you're going to get some amazing community. Look at this one. 
<laughs> and you can like them, repost them, add them to your collection, everything as well. So absolutely incredible to see all of this creativity in the game. It's just, it's 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 way better than Forza basically, which didn't even work for many months at launch on that. So here is Escapes I wanted to show you. This is the very realistic photo um, shooting part of Gran Turismo. I'll show you how it works. So you go into your area. That's a bit. I don't. I don't really like doing the ones that aren't um, something you can put in motion. That's just me. But now you can place your car. So we'll choose, for example, this Maserati with no livery on it. So it'll look quite, quite nice and stock. You can change things like your um, uh, the speed of the car and whatnot. You can zoom in and out. I'll show you what I'm doing on the controller. Zoom in and out. And if you focus here and basically lower the aperture, and if you lower the shutter speed a bit, it might be too low. We'll see. And then press triangle to take your photo. You should get a nice motion blur in the background. And the top tip is just hold your share button or whatever your share button screenshot is. And you get a really, really, really nice photo. I mean, it's just people are doing photo realistic stuff. And that, that took about five seconds to do. Insane. Stuff you can do, by the way. You can pop the colours a little bit. I don't see anyone really talk about this. If you go all the way down here, this is now only doing the car. So I'm saturating the car a little bit. You can add the brightness, but then it starts to look a little bit out of place sometimes with the scenery. But we've just popped that out. And let's try a little bit, even go low on the shot speed. This might start to go out of the profile of what the camera can handle. But again, it looks, just looks incredible. And I think it applies the ray trace in there as well. So you see on the left-hand side of the door. Unbelievable. So that escapes. It's sort of people laugh at escapes. But again, I think you could get your money's worth by just doing escapes. I'm not joking at all. I really, really, really enjoy doing it. Right, let's get into the meaty part of the game. Let's start with the cafe. This is the traditional career mode of Gran Turismo 7. Um, I'm not a fan. I, I just want to have a story or something. This feels like it doesn't really know what it's doing. It's very stylistic. You have these cafe menu books, but it's also very weird because there's a lot of cafe menu books where you can just buy the cars. Like here, you just need to buy these hot hatches. And I'd rather it sort of actually forces you to do the races. Kind of makes sense at the be beginning because it locks progression behind actually completing these. But it becomes a little bit meaningless and there's absolutely no story behind it. There are some conversations you can have. So you see here with Jeremy, there's a conversation. But I would actually rather these played in the background as you were racing these cars for the first time. I think that would be way more sort of immersive and I don't think a lot of people are actually going to this section. So you do get a collection of your trophies as well, by the way, which is quite a cool area to see what you've done. Third in the World GT Series. That was a very fun race to do because we basically tried to break that and do it with a car that was not worthy at all. You get the extra menu books as well, so they add these now with the DLCs basically. And you also get these collection of photographs when you complete the cafe menu book. So I think it's going to, some people are going to really like it. Some people are not going to be that bothered. I'm, I don't, I think they can do a better job with career, to be honest. Something I am impressed that they've added, this came with the second anniversary update, is this um, thing you're going to see up here, the weekly challenges. So good. Because before, when you did the weekly challenges, like, okay, it just was basically an arcade game. Okay, I've unlocked all the locations. I've got all the cars I want, really. It's now just a case of like, what do I do? And this gives you a little bit of structure. It's like a trellis to have fun. So if you do all of these, you're going to get your five-star roulette ticket. You see the prize at the bottom. And it basically just cycles through events that you already have. So it's an absolutely great, great thing to do. And you can see here, this is a limited time online only event, which I love. Yes, special event in the Audi TT that was just added to the game another one they've got way too many audi tts but yeah very 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 cool you can see the event directory that's the progress i play mainly online but you can see here if you want to get 100 percent in all this you can do it so they basically added some structure around the incredible tracks and cars and handling model that they have which is great so if we get out of there and actually go to the main um this is in that main section i'll just show you how you get in it's through the world circuits page which is the coliseum this is where you enter all of your offline races, basically. So you set up your races here, whether it's a single player tournament, a one shot race, or it's part of a um, custom race or a circuit experience, or it's going to be Sophie. You can see here it all is coming through the track. So you select your tracks rather than going through like a Sophie menu or like a circuit experience menu. 
So you can see here, Circuit Experience, if you do it, you get all of the credits. I have loads of guides for most of the Circuit Experience um, in Gran Turismo on my website for absolutely free, where you can pick up millions of credits. We'll have to do this one because this was the DLC track. Time trials, drift trials, custom races as well. And you've got some example races here. I would say once you start to understand the custom races, you can set up really fun races. A lot of stuff here is customizable, which is great. And you can, when there's wet weather, you can do this. No wet weather at Atlanta. It's a real misstep of the game that they haven't added weather to all of the tracks. I think it's something they should spend the time doing. It would be really well received and it seems like a relatively easy win. But I think Gran Turismo want to be super accurate in the way they're doing weather. So they're sort of hamstringing themselves. But you can create an incredible race here. You can name your drivers what you want. You can even choose the cars that you want. So if you go here, you can choose every single car. So I can swap out B Patel for someone in the oh, it's the same driver, but in a clear V6. You can make really fun races, basically. And I, I would love it if you were able to share these races. You can save them now, but you can't share them. Again, such an easy win here. Gran Turismo, I know you guys watch these videos. Please, please, please make it possible to share. I'd love to share some of my custom races that are designed to like give you sort of like the ultimate thrill and excitement of racing or chasing or whatnot. So, but anyway, you got all these things here and the ones that have Sophie enabled. So some tracks have Sophie enabled. You can select a AI Sophie race where you have the Sophie emojis and basically the AI is of a much higher standard than you get with a normal AI, but Sophie isn't available at all circuits. You can see here in the USA, you've got three where Sophie is available. And in Europe, you have four where Sophie is available. And finish it off in Japan, you have two where Sophie is enabled. Sophie can't go up Mount Panorama, for example. So that's the World Circus. That's not the only place where you can do racing there, because also in the missions area, you have some custom missions. This is a, a part of the game that launched with the game, but they haven't really expanded with it. They added the human comedy, but then they didn't go any further. So these are custom races that are... A lot of people were crying out for longer races, basically, when the game launched. And so they added these longer races where you get quite a lot of credits. I think at a time, these were actually some of the best credits per hour you could get in the game. They're probably still up there. If you're a credit fiend, you can see that I'm absolutely broke in the game. I never have credits. I'm always spending them on cars and paints and whatnot. But you've got some interesting events here in the mission challenges. Different styles as well. So overtaking cars, racing. Then I think you have the cone. Do you have cone ones here as well? Let's see. One lap magic as well. Yeah, cone challenge as well. So a lot of the really fun uh, areas of Gran Turismo are present in the mission challenges. The classic license center, which has been in Gran Turismo since GT1. You know, just I've been actually been saving some of these because they're so much fun to do and getting that gold medal and actually one of the rare areas of the game where you're really encouraged to use different cars. So a really fun area. Love it. Feeling the weight transfer, feeling the hand, uh, the different handling characteristics of different cars. The license center is the best way for that. And I think they've added the super license or another license on top now. So they did a little bit of DLC there as well. So we'll get into one line, but before we do, and then finally the last one here, but arguably the, the most interesting is multiplayer. Now you do get split screen, pa paddock and lobby. Split screen is, is pretty self-explanatory, except they've only just fixed it. Like it didn't used to work for a long time. Paddock is a very interesting one that I'm not sure people are really using, but you go into this paddock here. So if we're going to global, let's go into EMEA, the room's full. So we'll go into global three. And you basically have this sort of car park where you can go into. I bet you've never seen this before. I bet you never knew this was a feature. But <laughs> it's really interesting. It's very Japanese, dare I say. So we're online now. We go into the paddock and you can see that's my car there. And it applies my livery. I can send stuff like that. You can see people who are driving. Johnny Throttles here. Wasn't he in um, Cyberpunk? You can send it off. Sent him a love heart. Oh, God. He's reciprocated. Nah, it's just come back to me, hasn't it? Oh, damn. Maybe he did. Okay. Unintentional there. And then you can sp spectate people. So you can see this guy. You can chat with them. This is all normal functionality. And um, I thought I'd be able to go and see him uh, drive. But actually, I can't. It's a really weird thing. Here we go. There's Johnny Throttle and the Brazilian driver... 
So it's a nice functionality. I've been saying they need to be doing a lot more of this sort of stuff, but the way they've done it is, like I said, it's it's very, very, very unusual. But then we have the um, the standard lobby feature. You know, the biggest issue here is that you can't search by rooms full. I don't want to see a load of rooms that have one person in it. I want to see which room is absolutely buzzing and popping off, but I can't. Stupid! But you can see all the stuff here, all the filters from online rooms. So you can filter it and see. So let's say I want to, I really want to go to Monza. I can go down and find Monza. Here we go. And uh, these are the ones with Monza. And is there one that's popping off? Uh, I'd say this one with Patrick, maybe. The Rookie Cup looks quite interesting. Press uh, square and see the member list. If there's anyone there that you recognise. I thought it was a KCR driver. It's a KCFR driver. Is that part of us? Um, you can also see uh, rooms with friends and full rooms and whatnot like that as well. And you can create your own room and then you can save your settings as well. So you can run lobby. So this is all outside the official ranked multiplayer in sport mode. So you can basically have fun here, do leagues here. And this is where in our community, in our Discord, we do basically all of our races. But that's a beginner guide to Gran Turismo 7 2024. Um, if you want to see more about how to drive faster, check this video out right here and you'll be a lot faster. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.